What's going on, guys? I'm Tyler, and I'm here to let you know that Ant-Man and the... Ah, shit. What's going on, guys? I'm Tyler, and I'm here to let you know that Ant-Man and the Wasp is no perfect movie. And it takes place a couple of years after the events of Civil War, and Scott is no longer Ant-Man. He's under house arrest because apparently he needed to ask Hank for permission to go to Germany and kick the shit out of some Avengers. So there's that. But Hope and Hank need his help once again because they're trying to build this machine that can take them to the Quantum Realm and hopefully bring back Hope's mother, Janet. But there's this thief known as the Ghost who can pretty much turn transparent at will who's taking their tech. So they need to team up with Scott again so that they can take on the Ghost together. And I was kind of excited for this movie. I wasn't super pumped about it. Even though the trailers kind of sold it as this movie where the two of them are a duo and they're equally important, I kind of figured it was just going to be an Ant-Man movie with the Wasp as his sidekick. And yeah, that's pretty much how this movie plays out. If you're really expecting a superhero rom-com like they've been promising, you're not going to get that with this movie. But for the most part, even though it is beat by beat, kind of like the first film where it's a heist movie with some comedic elements, I still had a good time watching Ant-Man and the Wasp and... I don't regret paying the $7.50 it took to see this movie in the morning. I really gotta try and do that more. For starters, most of the actors do a really good job as usual. Paul Rudd is still just as charismatic and funny as he was the first time around. It's the same kind of arc where he's trying to make up for past sins that he's done. In this case, it's pretty much abandoning Hank and Hope in the process of trying to help out other people, in this case the Avengers, and it's cost them a fair bit. They had to go on the run. They don't have as much technology as they had before. It's not like they're desperate for anything, but there are things that they could do better at. And Michael Douglas is still just as funny as he was before. He's still got that real good smart-ass attitude. He still has a lot of technical mumbo-jumbo that I still can't follow. And I actually really like the villain in this movie. Ghost had a pretty interesting motivation that did make you feel sympathetic towards her, and even though her backstory has a little too much exposition, it was tragic enough. You felt for her as much as you needed to, and she does kick ass during the action scenes. And that was something I really appreciated about this movie, is that it didn't rely too much on action. It's kind of like the first film where a lot of it is plotting out their every move, and then the action scenes are there to move the story along. It isn't just, hey, 20 minutes have passed, we need a fight scene. So that part I enjoyed, and it has just the same amount of creativity as it did in the first film. The use of size in order to take down an opponent was really well done. Especially this fight where the Wasp takes on a ton of henchmen on her own in a kitchen. And the use of props, locations, and size all go together flawlessly, for me anyways. There was a really good car chase where the cars can change size and that part adds a lot of creativity to what could just be a pretty pedestrian action scene. So yeah, there's really a ton to admire about this movie. The thing is, is that they just cram in too many things at once. You have the main plot about Hope and Hank trying to bring Janet back and that the ghost is interfering with their plans. That part was simple enough, but they throw in these henchmen, one of them played by Walton Goggins, who I was looking forward to seeing because I'm a big Walton Goggins fan. I loved him in Hateful Eight. He was really good in Sons of Anarchy. I haven't seen Justified yet, but I want to, but if I'm being honest, the one scene involving him and his men in the kitchen, that was really all you needed from him. But no, they pretty much crammed him in from the rest of the movie, and it almost felt like filler. It still led to some good action and some good jokes, but Honestly, you really didn't need him. I felt like if you focused just on Ghost as a villain, you could have added more depth to her because there is a lot more explaining than actual showing for her arc. And I was a little disappointed with that because I felt like if they showed her daily routine and the things that she went through, you would feel much more sorry for her. Like I said, she's a good villain, but if they spent more time with her and just removed Goggins' character completely, you would have had a great villain, one of the better MCU villains in all honesty. They even throw in some of the side characters from the first movie, which, don't get me wrong, I got no problem seeing. I thought Michael Pena was pretty funny in the first film. I didn't think he was 
laugh out loud hilarious, but he was still funny. And in this one, his jokes didn't land as much. He had some good bits, don't get me wrong. He had another really funny flashback montage that I wish we had at least one more of. But even his arc just feels completely thrown in just for jokes and for filler. And that's kind of what makes this movie one of the lesser MCU sequels. It's not by any means Captain America the First Avenger or For the Dark World. It's not even close to those movies in all honesty. But it is a bit of a letdown considering what a huge surprise the first movie was. At least for me and my family. Because we didn't have the highest of expectations because... Yeah, it is the dude from 40-Year-Old Virgin who's going to be a superhero, but it was... The first movie was a little bit more focused. It was just this one heist that they were planning out and executing. And here, it is kind of one heist that they're executing, but there's too many things that are getting in the way. Oh, and one thing I should make clear. Just like I said before, this is really just an Ant-Man movie with the Wasp as a sidekick. I... I'm not even sure why they put Wasp in the title for because here's the thing Evangeline Lilly is still really good in this movie and she does have an arc around trying to do whatever it takes to bring her mom back and to make up for lost times that part I appreciated but they don't really focus that much on it they focus more on again the newer villain which even then they chalk up more to the side characters and the henchmen just for more comedy and it made it feel a lot more forced. Ant-Man and the Wasp is a good comic book movie and just a good comic book movie. You can watch it, you'll have a ton of fun if you liked the first film. If you didn't, don't bother with this one because you're gonna get nothing new and nothing different. But overall, I'm glad I saw it. The actors were all still funny. The action scenes, even though there are only a few, are a lot of fun, very creative, and raise the stakes of the story. I just wish that they took some elements, reduced them, and focused on the ones that were more important, like the main villain. So, with that said, I'm going to give Ant-Man and the Wasp a 3.5 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. If you've seen Ant-Man and the Wasp, what did you think about it? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, check out my other reviews at NoPerfectMovie.com. And once again, thank you all very much for watching. Take care.